Hey guys, Nerdking101 here. As you can see, I am not in my usual setup. I am actually away right now, so I don't have my microphone, which explains the low quality audio. Now, besides of the low quality audio, this should be fine. I do have my webcam here, so hopefully I at least look okay. Now, Wonder Woman 1984. Let's just talk about it, get into it. I'm sorry that there isn't any footage in this. This is a one shot, no editing, just me talking about the movie. No footage because the movie came out yesterday and I can't find any. So, Wonder Woman 1984. For all intents and purposes, this movie is the best DC movie ever on paper. It's really good. I've seen it get a lot of flack for being campy. It is very much an homage, an homage or a homage to the Wister Donner film, to like the first Superman movie, and it's great for that. I think I like it. I like the stuff. There's a lot of like campy saving people scenes that I really like. I there's a ton of there's at least three scenes in the movie where what where Diana saves like children, and I love it because like she's nice to them. It's not like she saves them, puts them down, and jumps back. Like she does things. Like I love the joke when she goes like this. Like shh. that was funny. I like that Diana. This is a superhero movie, and it is the first DC movie that feels like it. Diana gets to be a superhero. She gets to save people, she gets to wear a colorful costume. By the way, the fact that they made that, like, the, the rebirth, um, like, battle skirt thing work, like, the armor, that's incredible. I, I did not expect them to be able to make that work on green. It does, I did not expect to make it look so good in that, like, the bright color. That is a Wonder Woman costume. It's not this ugly, Zack Snyder, muted color. No, this is a Wonder Woman movie. And it's colorful, and it's bright, and it's hopeful, and it's about truth and justice. It's, everything is on paper good. I don't love it. Like, I, I think I should love this movie. I should, but I don't. Now, why don't I love it? Now, I think it's a fun movie. I had a really good time watching it, but there are a couple of problems. First, elephant in the room. I get what they're trying to do, that, like, you know, it, it feels like it's been only, like, a couple, like, months or a week since World War One because Diana's immortal, but a couple of problems with that. One, what do, what, what was Wonder Woman doing during World War Two where the Nazi were... Let's not talk about the fact that what, uh, what Wonder Woman was doing during World War II. I mean, she was around Devil World War I in the first movie, I believe. Okay. So, let's ignore that. That there is a, I'm assuming she helped. I'm assuming? I don't know, though. Steve Trevor. The fact that she's not over Steve Trevor is ridiculous. I'm sorry, it's been like 40 years. I mean, it's been over 100 years. Etta Candy was like a young adult, and then she died of old age when she was, she was like a 90 year old. Like, it's been a long, long time since the war. Since World War One. The fact that... It's just stupid. That she's not over Steve Trevor. To the point that he's like willing to risk innocent life for it. I all, you also can't frame Wonder Woman as being super heroic and then being like... Yeah, but there's this guy who should be dead. Like, I think it would have been a lot better if you explained it had not been a romance thing and made it, like, a thing. Like, it would have fit more, I think, with the character and worked more. It was like, Diana can't accept that she let Steve die. Like, she can accept that a person she loves is gone, but she can't accept and get over the regret that she let, that she didn't save someone. That, I think, would have worked a lot better. See, like, I can't let you die. See, like, I can't let you do that, Steve, because, you, because you're alive now. So I have to save you. Like, you, you could have made it to that superhero thing where it's like, I have to save Steve Trevor because he's alive. But no, you didn't do that. It was because Diana didn't get over something that happened, like, 40 years ago. Which is like... I mean, and the thing... It would have been one thing if she got over it mostly and was still a little sad about it. No, she's like... In, like, early grieving stages. See, like, she still, she has, like, a shrine built to, like, these dead people. And, like, so you're telling me Diana just didn't make any new friends? Like, Diana met people in World War One and never made new friends? Like, I understand after they all died, she closed in herself off. That makes sense. But, like, you're telling me during that process, like, Etta Candy was like, Here's my buddy Phil! Meet Phil, Wonder Woman! 
and one of them Bill, and him and her and Bill become good friends. I don't know, the whole thing, it's a, it's a dumb, it doesn't work for me. The fact that he didn't get over Steve Trevor does not work for me. Now, Cheetah was great. The actor who played her, fantastic, great movie. I, I have no complaints about Cheetah. I've seen some complaints about Cheetah being underutilized. I, I mean, yeah, I wish we could have kept her around, but with the way, it, it, it would have made that. You either, I do see the val there is some validity to the complaint. I wish we could have just not used her at all. But I feel like Maxwell Lord wasn't really a punching villain. Like, they needed something Wonder Woman could punch. Maxwell Lord is a big deal. Maxwell, it's a little bit like with Les Luthor in a modern Superman movie. Les Luthor needs a giant robot because it's you need to have an action piece, and they it couldn't the action piece could not be Superman punching the billionaire industrialist Les Luthor. You couldn't do that. There would have to be a giant robot and have to be Cheetah. The, 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 the final fight of the movie is, is Wonder Woman versus Cheetah. Maxwell Lord and Wonder Woman do not fight. They have a conversation where she reaches him. Now, speaking of Maxwell Lord. The, the thing in this movie is a completely different character. It's not Maxwell Lord. It's not Maxwell Lord. And to be honest, I don't like the character very much. I like the ending. The ending is emotional. It, it, it works on paper. The ending is emotional. It hits the right emotional bullet point. It made me feel something. The ending with him and his son, Alistair. But this, but this is the problem with the scene, right? You ready for the problem with the scene? Let me tell you what it is. Okay. The problem with, 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 with Maxwell Lord is that he had no motivation. Like, literally, like, the defense I've seen given, people, in my, I, my friend gave me, is that he's stupid. It's not, it's not a defense of a plot point. Making a character stupid is not justified not giving them any reasonable motivation. And the way his powers work is never very well explained. Like, it, I kind of get it, but the whole thing with Maxwell Lord is overly convoluted, it doesn't make any sense, and it's kind of like a bad comic book. I can see that John wrote this, because in one way, I think that's why I enjoyed it so much, like, I, I, I recognize that it's bad, but I had fun reading it, I think because I recognize it, it feels like a bad comic book. It feels like a bad comic book run with highlights in it, it feels like certain scenes are like, the good issues. Of like a bad comic book run. It kind of how I feel about Tom King run. There's a lot of the Tom King Batman run. There's a lot of stuff in there that I don't like. But there is this, this subset of uh, how do I say this? Of stuff that's good. Diana versus Cheetah is good. <laughs> By the way, the best scene in the movie is the plane scene. Now, from a technical perspective, it doesn't make any sense. There's no reason Steve Trevor knows how to fly a modern-day fighter jet because he fl flew propeller planes in World War One. That's dumb. That's unbelievably contrived and stupid. How did Wonder Woman working at a museum get her access to a military-grade plane? Who the hell knows? Don't ask. Yeah, the movie did not care or not to explain how Diana Prince working at a, mu at a, at a museum identifying artifacts Makes being the head of a department at a Washington D.C. museum equate to her, her, her having access to military grade plane. I also like you know, I mean, like, I I I've never obviously driven one of those. I would assume it's not as simple as you get in and hit a button. I assume there's like some sort of security system to prevent people from just taking stealing the plane. Like you know, I, I, aren't there like keys or like passwords or like fingerprint ID, you're telling me anybody can get into this military grade plane? Like, anybody can walk into the, to, to the airspace, just walk in, using like a, a key card from a museum, get in a plane and hit a button and it takes off? But, 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 the thing when they are in the air, it's beautiful. It is so well directed. And the stuff with the fireworks, it's, it's, a go it's, it's gorgeous to look at. It's bright and colorful. I love it. I love, okay, on paper, the Wonder Woman having the power to make the invisible jet invisible using the same magic that Zeus used to make the mascara invisible to protect the women. Makes sense. I don't like it though, it's stupid that Wonder Woman can do that. 
That's dumb. I didn't like it. But it's not... And it, 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 I think it's one of those situations where it's not a plot hole. There's nothing technically wrong with it. I just didn't like it. Once again, I said earlier, the movie's really pretty. The fight scenes are good. I think the final fight with Cheetah is a little cramped and dark. Which I get. I think they were trying to obscure the fact that I don't think the CGI for Cheetah was probably very good. However, counterpoint, counterpoint to that, it could be good because you can make Rocket good, Rocket Raccoon good, you can make Cheetah good. Counterpoint to that, right? Counterpoint. Okay, moving on past all that crap. They try to refine the goodbye between. I didn't think all the actors killed it. So like when I say a thing wasn't good, it's because of like a writing problem. Like the thing with Diana and say goodbye to Steve Trevor, Gal Gadot and Chris Pine kill it. Like there's, there's, look, they have chemistry. They're good. It works. I had no problem. And I think but not with Steve and Diana. Maybe my favorite part of the movie, like the romance between them, that's it's the best part of it because everything else is good. And I like it, but like when you get to like the climax, it's like the villain's overly convoluted and stupid, and none of this makes any sense. Um, Diana losing her power doesn't work. This is the thing. This is a problem with Diana losing her power. It, by the way, this is, this is not just the movie. It's any it's anything, comic, anything, comics, TV shows, books, movies, novels. I don't care. Diana Power said it's not properly defined. It, like, I thought, I thought Diana wasn't, I, I, I always assumed Diana, like, Diana gets shot, and I'm like, I mean, obviously, Diana can get shot. She's not bulletproof. If she was bulletproof, she wouldn't use her bracer, her bracelet to block blows, to block bullets. So why, how is that an indication that she's weaker if she's not bulletproof? It doesn't make sense. It's like, with Super Superman, for example, you put Chris in front of Superman, you shoot him with a bullet, and you, you, the audience immediately is like, Superman can't be, a, a Superman is bulletproof. He has impenetrable skin. He is weakened. Here with Diana, I'm like, her powers aren't clearly defined. I'm like, so what, is it supposed to be that she's like, slower? Like, if she's not, like, it's like, and then she goes and does these things, like, she should have been able to avoid that, but, like, I don't understand the bullet thing. The bullet hitting her, how that makes her weaker. Like, there isn't really any indication in the movie that she's weaker. It's more, it's like, she's not performing it well. I, I don't know how to put it into words, to be honest with you. But when you don't have clearly defined powers, it's much harder to do this whole you lose them thing. I'm like, what is she exactly losing? She's strong, she's fast, she's skilled. She's also, she's also, I also don't like the implication. Wonder Woman is a warrior. Like, she shouldn't, it shouldn't be like she loses her power and she can't fight. She's, like, Wonder Woman, a weaker Wonder Woman should be able to beat Barbara. Bar none, she should be able to do that. Because Wonder Woman had thousands of years of Amazonian training. Barbara, Barbara is a lady who works at a museum. Wonder Woman is a, is a warrior princess from an island of immortal warriors who have been trained in combat since birth. You saw what she could do when she was six years old in the beginning of in that pointless scene in the beginning of the movie that really didn't need to be there. Besides, it's literally like a, it's like, it's like we don't need to see the scene of Wonder Woman childhood where Wonder Woman learns cheating at bad. Like, I would assume the superhero has at some point in her life learned cheating is bad. I don't need you to tell me that movie, that Wonder Woman knows cheating is bad. I don't need to see the experience that made her learn that. I will say, that little girl, whose name I don't know, is really good at playing young Diana, and that thing was excellent. Patty Jenkins, little girl, HBO Max, Young, young Adventures of Diana miniseries, <laughs> green light before she too, before she outgrows the role, She's good at it. Young Adventures of Diana on Themyscira miniseries by Patty Jenkins and that with Patty Jenkins starring that little girl who that little girl whose name I don't know. I wish I did. She seemed like a really good actress. That girl, that girl could go places like one day. The Green Line of miniseries with her. She seems to really like doing it. I get the feeling that she's like, I get to play Young Wonder Woman. I think that little girl probably really likes doing it. So just give her a miniseries. I think she'd have a lot of fun. 
Now this is the thing though. And also, like the thing when she threw a temper tantrum, a temper tantrum, like, like I would have bought, I would have bought, that girl can act. Not the thing. Like I bought that temper tantrum. Like, like I was cringing during it, but I think I was supposed to be. Like that girl knows how to play a little kid. That girl, I mean, you're not, I mean, you're asking her to play a child. You're not asking her to do something too complex. Like that girl when she threw a tantrum, like I would have bought if you hadn't done this. I'm like that girl knows. That girl knows how to. She, that girl not. That that that, that, a, that that is a good child actor. Okay, now back to the actual movie. Um, I think that Rom is everything on paper is great. It's a lot of poor execution, and I don't know. Okay, I love Dune. I love Dune's Day Clock. Going off of the DC comic book, Dune's Day Clock, which was written by Jeff John. And, and three Joker. I Jeff John is the person who sometimes failed at execution. He's not always the best executor of ideas. So I wonder to God, is it possible that the issue with execution of Jeff John or on Jenkins? We don't know. Jenkins, the first movie is a must has had less issues like this. The first movie has issues in the final act, but that's because of studio interference. We know that. That was, that was Zack Snyder's studio stuff. That wasn't Patty Jenkins being like, we need to have a big monster every fight at the end. Patty Jenkins was telling a really heartfelt story that got upended by a stupid ending. Now, and I like this movie, I do. I, I, I enjoyed watching it, I just don't know if I could if I could objectively say it's good. It's good. Honestly, I don't even really want to grade it. Like, as you can tell, I'm very conflicted about this movie because I enjoy watching it. But there are some parts of it that just fall completely apart. Maxwell Lord is too complicated and he doesn't make sense. The villain falls apart. Final Fight with Cheetah is a little cramped and poorly lit. Real world excuses aside, the fact is in the movie, it's poorly lit and it doesn't look great. It's fun, it's a good scene, it's great. The scene with Wonder and there's a lot of awesome stuff in this movie. There are times in this movie where I can feel that a com- what I like about it is that I felt like I was reading a comic book, which, I, which was awesome. Like this, I I can see John, I can see Jeff John's influence in it in the sense that I can feel the comic book writer of and then full page spread. Like I can tell what Josh in this movie would be a full very full page spread. The thing when he's on the lightning, first of all, is that the comic book? It would be a home Dark Knight Return. That's what it would be. It would be a home. It would be like a Wonder Woman style Dark Knight Return. It would finally be. We've had Superman do it. We've had Batman. We've had Superman home it, and now we would have Wonder Woman home it. Like I can see Wonder Woman. I can see Jeff John being a comic book writer in this. I can see that. By the way, also Linda Carter has a cameo at the end. Linda Carter, awesome. No, really, the thing with Linda Carter was just really cool. I liked that scene. It was awesome. I'm very pleased about Linda Carter being getting a folk credit. I like that Linda Carter and Gal Gadot know each other to their spectator. I like that. That's cool. Now, it's, it's, it's a fun movie. I just think I'm paid. The best way I could describe it is, you know what? It's a, bad, it's a fun comic book. It's like a comic book. It's fun to read. And when you look back on it, you're like, oh, this, this may not be the greatest thing I've ever read, but it's really fun to read. It's fun to watch, but it, it's convoluted and doesn't entirely make sense. And some of the plot points are weak. Some of the character points are kind of weak. I think the weakest thing is Diana being hung up on Steve Trevor. Like, like over 15 years later. I should know when World War One ended. I don't. I apologize, I'm not a history buff. I don't know what year World War One ended. I should, I apologize. But, I don't know off the top of my head. And I didn't do any research for this video. But, Diana, for example, um, takes off. She, she fought. Diana um, never gets over Steve Trevor, which I didn't like. Uh, until, until I get this movie, he, Chris Pine better not come back in the next one. Please, God, stop bringing Chris Pine back. Diana never gets over Steve Trevor. One bullet, bullet number one. Diana not getting over a dead, not getting over this guy she dated and knew for a couple of weeks or to a couple of months after 15 years. It's weird. 
Um, and, 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 and just bizarre. It's not even bad story though, it's, it's just bizarre. It's just, it's, it's bizarre, it's unexplained, and it's weird. And also doesn't answer a lot of questions. Had she been back to San Mascara at all? We don't know! Who cares? She clearly has some sort of relationship with them in the Justice League. Who knows? I, I certainly don't because the movie doesn't tell me. How did she get an identity? Blah, blah, blah. I, none of it matters. But, okay, another problem. No, Diana not getting over to see Trevor. Maxwell ordered the whole dumb. The final fight with Cheetah was a little weak. I liked it. I just felt it was a little hard to see and it was in a little bit of a cramped environment. Those three things, mentally the Maxwell, Maxwell Lord thing really hurt the movie for me. There's also a sequence in which Steve Trevor tries on clothing that I don't like. Because the, the thing when he tries on clothing, I like everything else, but the thing when he's trying on clothing, while fun to watch, is basically the haha ha men, men do it too version of the scene from Wonder Woman when she tries on clothes. They're the same scene. It's literally, they reversed the fist out of water thing. Diana is no longer the fist out of water Steve Trevor is. So he doesn't know the clothes, he doesn't know the culture. It's funny, but it's also like, didn't we do this last time? Like, it worked. It worked in the first movie, it worked here. But didn't we do it last time? I appreciate that we got more of it this time, because I felt like we glossed over that in Wonder Woman to get to the epic fighting stuff. I like that this movie is very much a Wonder Woman story. Like, Patty Jenkins, no, same, either Patty Jenkins or Jeff Johns apparently should be writing Wonder Woman. <laughs> apparently, Jeff Johns, either Patty Jenkins really likes Wonder Woman and really understands the character, or Jeff Johns should be writing, should be writing my main Wonder Woman book. <laughs> I mean, apparently, he really, he really gets Wonder Woman. He all, and he, Jeff Johns, don't take anything I've said in this book and the take of Jeff Johns. Doomsday Clock is one of my favorite comics of all time. I like Doomsday Clock. Now, that's uh, not one of my favorite comics of all time. I take that back. That that that's gonna really exaggerated. But I like Dune Thing. I don't think it's unnecessary. I don't think it's bad. I think it's actually pretty good. He hell he just I just read today Death Metal Secret Origin, which was also written by Jeff John with with not Scott Snyder apparently. That was beautiful. It was a great book. I loved that book. I loved it. It was great. It was a, it was a Superboy Prime story. It was it, it was the redemption of Superboy Prime, and I I adored it. It was a great book. Like I adored that book. It was a good book. Jeff John can write. He's a good writer. He has a tendency to over to to get make things a little overly convoluted and hard to follow and weird and stupid and kind of let he has a tendency to let great ideas fall apart a little bit. So yeah, um, not my ideal book, to be honest with you. This book was not book. Sorry, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that now. I'm thinking about Jeff Johns. The book Jeff Johns writes for DC. Not this is not my ideal. Or this is not ideal. I think it's a really fun movie. I think everything is good on paper. I just think it fails to execute a lot of its ideas properly on screen. And I just wanted to just release this ramble about Wonder Woman a bit. I liked it. I liked watching it. If I had to rate it, I would give this movie not remembering and not taking into consideration the first movie, by the way. I don't remember what I gave the first movie, and I haven't rewatched the first movie in a long, in a few years now. In like two years. I haven't rewatched re it since I did a video on it a couple of years ago. So this is the thing. No, I would give this movie a seven point nine. I would, you know, I'll give it an eight out of ten. I think it. I honestly, I think this movie would be a ten out of ten if it wasn't for a ton of this shortcoming. There are people giving it like a three out of ten, which I don't understand. Like, it's a good movie, and by as somebody who loves Superman, the homage, like the Richard Donner style of storytelling, I love it. I love that Wonder Woman gets to be a superhero in this. I love that she gets to be a legitimate superhero. I love that she gets to swoop around. I love that Wonder Woman gets to save people and be a superhero. That it's not like, oh, I guess the children die during my fight. It's like, no, punch, punch bad guy, swoop back, save children, get them out of the way, 
do something cute to make them feel better, like, you know, just, or like, you know, Superman does it too, like, both, both Wonder Man and Superman have tendency to do, like, cute things for children when they say them, like, Superman, uh, typically if a child draws, like, Superman will grab a child's toy, that will save the child and the toy, and then hand the kid the toy, and, and then he'll, like, give him a hug, and then he'll go back to battle, within the time span of a couple seconds. Wonder Woman, like, smiled and, like, passed the kid's head at one point. I'm like, stuff like that I like. I like that they get to be, I like that Wonder Woman gets to be a superhero. But, there's a weak part. I just don't know if I would call the movie perfect. This is just me. It's an 8 out of 10. I think Maxwell, Maxwell Lord, the Steve Trevor thing, and that final fight kind of hurt the movie. And then a lot of it is just weird, weird, like, a lot of the rest of it is just bad execution. So I think I'm going to knock it down to a 7. 7 out of 10. I feel very comfortable with that number. I mean, then there's a lot of weird things, like Steve Trevor flying a jet, modern day jet, when he's never flown, only flown a propeller plane. Wonder Woman doing that. I mean, there's a lot of weird things like that. There is. It's just a lot of it, it's bad. So there are really only a couple things I don't like, and the rest of it is, I think, the execution isn't very good. The only things I don't like are Steve Trevor, the Steve Trevor, Diana's not getting over Steve Trevor dying, Maxwell Lord, and I think the final fight with Cheetah is a little weak. And when I say Maxwell Lord, I mean everything. Including the ending, which on paper I like, it, it, it made me emotional, but I get it. I don't think that ending makes any sense, and I don't like that his backstory would just shoehorn thing randomly. That was all really stupid and lame. And besides for those three things, like Maxwell or the main villain, which is a big one. The reason that it has to have a 7 out of 10 is mainly Maxwell Lord. The other two things are like problems, but I can get over them. I can't forgive the Maxwell Lord thing. So it's a 7 out of 10, because besides for those three things, the rest of it is just poor execution. I also think, I didn't really get in, I haven't really gotten into this, and I want to end this video, but we're approaching 30 minutes, but, wow, with that scene in the beginning with young Diana kind of pointless, as I brought up earlier. So, a pointless opening scene, weak, weak execution in certain areas, a, a main, a, a real, a bad villain who's overly convoluted, none of it makes sense, and then, the, and, and then just technical issue with the cheetah fight and me not liking the stuff with Steve, with her not being over Steve after like 40 years. But yeah, besides for that, I, I like the movie. It's 7 out of 10. Not, not, not bad. It's not a bad movie. It's not great. I think I may do something where I like compare it to the first one. I think the first one may be better. I actually don't know. It's been forever since I saw it. The thing is, is, I do think the the final act of this movie is more is better than the final act of Wonder Woman on the first one. I think it's more in line. I think the final act of this movie is at the very least more in line tonally with everything else. It's like like no, the movie like, like Maxwell Lord is the big bad, and he doesn't turn into a giant monster. Like it's it's definitely a more story character driven story mo movie than an acting one, and I like that they stick to her, that Patty Jenkins stuck to her gunk with that. But yeah, 7 out of 10, hope you enjoyed this video, tell me what you thought of Wonder Woman in the comment section down below, like the video if you enjoyed, sorry about the audio quality, my next video will be back to regular stuff, and it will be an Evangelion video. Probably. Depends. My, my next non-topical video will be Evangelion, but I am planning to do some stuff for uh, some like uh, one or two more comic book things in January for uh, like DC future state and stuff. But I am but I am doing an anything yelling on video now. That is coming. I'm I, I'm working on it. I've just been really busy with the holiday, and so I've been doing these more quick, easy things. Like I've been doing more of these because these are quick and easy to make, and I want to talk about these things. So we're going to get Evangelion video, some more DC stuff, an Evangelion video, and a My Hero Academia video. So, expect in January and February a My Hero Academia video and an Evangelion video. Those are both coming. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day.